Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to math class. This is mensuration lesson three. We're going to now take a look at circles. Let's identify the key parts of a circle before we look at circle measurements. We have beginning with the center of the circle. All the points equidistant from this point are what form the points on the circle. The line running from one point to another point on the circle through the center is the diameter. The line from the center to a point on the circle is the radius. The measurement around the circle, which we refer to as perimeter with polygons, is the circumference. If I connect one point on the circle with another point, not necessarily through the center. This is a chord. And notice that if I want to look at, if I take a look at the sort of the lower white right quadrant of this circle, I've shaded in an area, which I'm going to call a sector. This looks like a pizza slice. This is a portion of the circle formed by an angle emanating from the center to the circle. And I also have a name for the circumference portion that is the outer border of that sector, which is arc. So important components of my circle are center, diameter, radius, circumference, chord, sector, and arc. Now let's look at important relationships in the circle. First is circumference, which is 2 times pi times the radius, or pi times diameter. Those are the same value because the diameter is 2 times the radius, which is in fact another relationship that we can note. The diameter is 2 times the radius. Area is pi times radius squared. Now when I'm considering the measurements relating to arc and sector, an arc measurement Notice that the arc is a portion of the circumference, and the portion or the proportion is based on the angle forming the arc coming from the center of the circle. So whatever that angle measure is, divided by 360 times my measurement for circumference, which is 2 times pi times radius, will give me my arc measure. And also, in similar fashion, we can see that the sector is a portion of the circle. It's a portion of area. And calculating our sector area is going to also be related to the angle forming the arc. Angle divided by 360, this time multiplied by the area formula, times pi r squared to calculate the area of the sector. So we have equations for circumference, diameter, area, arc length, and sector area. So let's take a look at a figure that we'll analyze based on our understanding of circles and maybe some other shapes as well. I'll analyze a shape which looks like overlapping circles. And I'm going to create this figure by first showing my center with dotted lines which looks like a square which we're going to see that it is and now I have a shape on the top and I have the same shape on the bottom and I want to know the area of the shape in the dark lines. The dotted lines inside are simply an indication of helpful information to me. And I have measurements 
that are important for my calculations as well. And my measurements are that one of the these dotted line lengths is 12 and all four lengths are congruent and one of my angles is a 90 degree angle. Now this is a lot of information as a matter of fact this is all the information I need to be able to analyze this shape and calculate the area inside the solid black line. So the shapes that I'm dealing with are two circles and inside I've got a figure that has four equal sides one right angle since all four sides are equal the other angles are equal as well they're all 90 degrees in other words the shape in dotted lines is a square so I'm going to analyze this figure based on my understanding of circles and my understanding of squares now in deciding my approach I'm going to make some notes in the at the top of the screen. Often an approach I'm going to use is I'm going to add areas of figures and then subtract areas of other figures. So I might add the area of circle 1 and circle 2 and then subtract the area of square 1. Now I'm not going to do that in this case because I don't have complete circles. So before I begin doing calculations I want to think about the right approach and adding the areas of the circles isn't the right approach because I don't have complete circles. Even if that square were gone, the, the circles are, are sort of colliding and I don't have complete circles. They're, they're cut off. So what I want to do instead is I want to calculate sector 1 and add sector 2 and add square 1 and that will be the area of my figure and the sectors are going to be the same because both circles have the same radius length which is 12 and the sectors that we're evaluating both are 270 degrees so let's calculate sector 1 We're calculating the area. So the area of a sector is angle over 360 times pi times radius squared. So let's fill in our two missing numbers. The radius we're given is 12. And the sector I've mentioned is 270 degrees. If we look back at the diagram, looking inside the lower circle, I know that the angle in the square is 90 degrees. The total degrees of a circle, 360 degrees. So what's left is 270 degrees. And that's the measure I want to use to get my the correct proportion of the circle that I'm calculating. So I can work through my math. I'll simplify to 3 over 4 times 144 times pi. And to make my numbers a bit more manageable if I'm doing this without a calculator, then I can simplify the denominator of 4 to 1, the numerator value of 144 to 36, in other words, 4 divided by 4 in the denominator is 1. 144 divided by 4 in the numerator is 36. And I end up with 108 pi. And let's, let's add in some unit measures. Let's say we're dealing with meters. The radius is 12 meters. And to know we've calculated a sector area of 108 pi meters squared. Now let's calculate our square area. I haven't calculated sector 2. Sector 2 is equal to sector 1 so in our final calculation we'll simply double the area of sector 1. Our square, the square has sides of 12 so we can multiply 
base times height 12 times 12. In the case of a square, since those are the same, we can simply square the length of a side. 12 squared equals 144 meters squared. And now our final calculation, the area is 2 times 108 pi plus 144, which will be 216 pi plus 144 meters squared. And if you want to approximate that value, then you can multiply 216 times 3.14 and calculate an approximate area of this figure. And that approximate area is 822 meters squared. So in this example, we've seen how to apply circle mensuration concepts to a compound shape. In other words, a shape that isn't exactly a circle. It isn't exactly a square. It's a combination of shapes that we're familiar with. We use our understanding of those concepts to analyze the figure, determine how to calculate the total area, make our calculations, and arrive at an answer. This concludes the lesson on mensuration in circles. In later mensuration lessons, we're going to learn about the concepts of surface area and volume. As always, be sure to practice these concepts with exercises from your textbook, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.